She chose these four books. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. It's about you. I think he's seen Blade Runner many times. <laughs> we could be mad together. I will weep. I have a stupidly long June TBR <laughs> and I equally stupidly agreed. Well, okay, no. When I agreed to allow Bookborn to choose my TBR again, and I'm also choosing her TBR. This, like we talked about this months ago. So I had time to plan my life in such a way as to accommodate that. And then I just didn't. So it's it's on me, but nevertheless, I'm complaining about it. But yeah, as you would have seen in my thumbnail, I'm guessing my stack of books is pretty massive. So when I say Bookborn chose my TBR, I mean, she chose these four books that I don't know what the, I, I'm pretty sure I know what one of them is based on like what her little note is, but I don't know what the rest of them are. So these four books, which is like a totally doable amount of things to read in a month. And then, I have brought upon myself, well, patrons and other things as well, but then there's also all of these. <laughs> Bookborn isn't responsible for that. But anyway, um, I'll tell you about all of them, but I assume that we're all most excited to see what Bookborn chose for me. That's what I'm most excited about. So, well, let's find out together. I'll read you what her little notes are, unless they seem super private, but I... I haven't actually looked at the notes either because I was like, I don't want to know. All right, so I don't know if it signifies that there's three that are wrapped in black paper and one in brown. I'm I'm guessing not. I think probably she's like read out of the black paper, but I guess I'll try to keep track of which one it was that had brown paper and see if I figured that out. Anyway, the brown paper package tied up in strings is hopefully one of my favorite things. <laughs> she says, super thought provoking and one of my other top three short story collections. When she says other, I'm assuming it's because she chose Paper Menagerie for me last year, which was a short story collection. I think that's why other, uh, otherwise maybe there's another short story collection here. I don't think so though. So I'm gonna hang on to this so I can stick it inside the book. Make sure Kaz doesn't eat the string. I did not individually wrap all of her books because I hate wrapping things. So unless I absolutely have to. All right, the big reveal. Stories of your life and Others? Stories of your life and others? I don't know what the title means. <laughs> by Ted Chang. Oh yeah, where's the note? Okay, so super thought provoking and one of my other top three short story collections. Delivers dual delights of the very, very strange and the heartbreakingly familiar, often presenting characters who must confront sudden change, the inevitable rise of automatons or the appearance of aliens while striving to maintain some sense of normalcy. With sharp intelligence and humor, Chang examines what it means to be alive in a world marked by uncertainty, but also by Beauty and Wonder, an award-winning collection from one of today's most lauded writers, Stories of Your Life and Others, is a contemporary classic. What? I know the name Ted Chang. What else has Ted Chang written? Is there an also by? It's killing me. I definitely know that name. I don't think I've read anything by him, but... Well, Story of Your Life, the basis for a major motion picture. What motion picture? What was it called? Was it called that? Because that doesn't ring any bells. Okay, I'm Googling it. I know I know the name Ted Chang. Exhalation? Is that it? I haven't read that, but I, that's what I've heard of, I think. Is Exhalation? Arrival! Arrival! I haven't read that either, but my dad is obsessed with Arrival. He and I saw it together in the cinema, and that's the only time I've seen Arrival. And my dad has watched Arrival, I don't even know how many times. More times than he's seen Blade Runner, I think, and he's seen Blade Runner many times. Okay, that's why the name is familiar to me. And maybe that's Story of Her Life, is that? Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Right there, it says Arrival. <laughs> I'm so dumb. I'm gonna save it all that Googling, but we're off to a smashing start. Next one. Um, if we do this long enough, you'll be forced to read his entire backlog. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. I think you can also probably guess what this is based on that note and the size of this and who's sending it to me. Oh, I guess I should prove, I, I, I have to tell you what I think it is so that I can prove that I didn't just say, oh yeah, of course that is what I thought it was after the fact. I think this is Brandon Sanderson's Emperor's Soul. Is that what it's called? I have had a lot, a lot of people who know that I don't really like Sanderson that much recommend that to me. And I like the length of it. <laughs> Emperor's Soul. I don't think I've ever seen this cover. I think I only ever see the UK cover for it. And yeah, with his other books, I usually know what both the American and the UK covers look like, but I have I don't think I've ever seen this cover before. It's a very intriguing cover. Very eerie cover. 10th anniversary special edition, is that all? Okay, well, I'm not gonna read the back. It's a it's a Sanderson book. I actually, I think it takes place in the Cosmere? Possibly not. I guess I should find that out. And it's the winner of the Hugo Award, although that doesn't necessarily signify. But yeah, I'm genuinely looking forward to this. Um, as I have enjoyed Sanderson. I really like Skyward. Um, I mostly enjoyed Mistborn until the end, so I have the capacity to enjoy Sanderson, and so many people have said that I would like this one. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Unlike the Tai Chiang book, there's definitely a list of previously by Sanderson, or also by Sanderson, I shouldn't say previously. Anyway, okay. So we've got Ted Chang and Brandon Sanderson. Okay, this is for our general feminine rage. I got her a feminine rage book as well. Just gotta make sure I get all these strings so Cass doesn't eat them. Invisible Women. Oh, I think I think Bookborn told me about this when she was reading it. Data bias in a world designed for men. Yeah, I think I think this is the I remember her talking to me about a book like this, and I think it was this. And if so. It certainly intrigued when she was talking about it. So yeah, this is this is a little thick, but um, yeah, I, I I remember being very much interested in this. So I feel quite hopeful that this will be a good read. <laughs> and then last but not least, or possibly least actually, I have no idea, is for your general eye stabbing energy. <laughs> I think you might have the same issue with the ending I did, but still well worth the read. So this is like, well, not the eye stabbing. Well, this is like me giving her Strange the Dreamer and being like, you'll be mad at the end too. <laughs> we could be mad together. <laughs> okay, but eye stabbing. Also, if you don't know, this is a running joke that's not even that much of a joke that I tend to like books slash characters that um, enact violence upon eyeballs. It's just like um, a recurring trend. Some would say worrying trend. I'm okay with it. And Bookborn is clearly endorsing and encouraging it by giving me more material for for that. All right, what is this glorious eye-stabbing book? A Song for the Void by Andrew C. Piazza. I've never seen or heard of this in my life. A mind imprisoned is the greatest of hells. 1853 South China Sea, while on patrol between the Opium Wars, the crew of the steam frigate HMS Charger pursues a fleet of pirates that have been terrorizing the waters surrounding Hong Kong. But now the hunters have become the hunted. Something else has come to the South China Sea, something ancient and powerful and malevolent. Now the crew of the Charger must face their worst nightmares in order to survive the terrible creature they came to know or they come to know as the dark star a song for the void is a haunting terrifying historical horror novel that will keep you turning the pages and jumping at the shadows that sounds kind of amazing i'm dismayed by how um small the type is and how small the margins are <laughs> if it's good you know then like you don't want it to end so that's fine i'm guessing this is self-published was this perhaps an spfbo um book in which case i'm telling on myself for not knowing that when I saw it? Well, it doesn't say anything about that. Not that I would necessarily expect it to. It's pretty new, 2020. Okay, well, yeah, never heard of this, but it certainly intrigues. Um, it also looks like a butthole. <laughs> I'm not loving the cover, but I'm very intrigued by the, the book, by the contents. Okay, we'll stick the note back inside. Also, general eye stabbing energy. So if nothing else, eyes will be stabbed. I've been promised. All right, so that's what Bookborn has chosen for me. We will do live shows like last year, uh, exact date and time TBD. Um, but we'll talk about the book she picked for me on her channel and the books that I picked for her on my channel, um, like end of June, beginning of July around there. So yeah, uh, once more, it was Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chang, The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson, Invisible Women um, by Caroline, Caroline Criado Perez. Hope I said that right. And A Song for the Void by Andrew C. Piazza. And yeah, I will squeeze those in between all the other books that I have to read in June, which are as follows. My patrons have chosen for me to vlog for them, I, mainly because I think they just want to force me to finish this. It's on my list for the year to accomplish. In fairness, though, they're not wrong. Like, I clearly needed a push. Jade Legacy. I purchased the paperback because I don't, I'm not listening to these on audiobook and I find the hardcovers, like, gen genuinely? I think it took me a little bit longer to read Jade War because I had the hardcover. With Jade uh, City, I had the paperback and I could just like smush it around and like take it into my bed and, and just like, you know, yeah. Even in paperbacks, it's too massive to read super comfortably. But anyway, yeah, Jade War, I had the hardcover and it's just like more uncomfortable to read. I love collecting hardcovers, but they, for reading, like physically reading, paperbacks are preferable in my opinion. So I got myself a paperback of Jade's Legacy so I wouldn't have to deal with the giant hardcover. Hopefully that will make this go down easier. I'm pretty anxious about it, I'm not gonna lie. Not because I think I'm gonna dislike it, but because it'll be over. Well, I have the Jade Setter of Jan Loon and I've ordered the other novella, but it, it will be over. 
whatever. And I'm very afraid it's gonna break me emotionally and spiritually. I do wanna know and I do wanna finish it and I wanna be able to talk about the whole series and see all the spoilers and everything. So I guess I'm ready guys. And I have my candles. If you don't know, um, it has become a requirement to light lilac vanilla candles while reading because I did that when I read Jade City because one of the chapters was called The Lilac Divine and I happened to have a lilac candle and then I just, that candle kept burning as I continued unstoppably reading Jade City. And that scent is now the scent of the Greenbone Saga. And I continued, I purposely lit that candle when reading Jade War. And I have a backup in case I run out while I read Jade Legacy. So it will always smell of lilac and vanilla. So we're ready. It'll be a long vlog though. I like, I have a bad habit of vlogging the books for my patrons like the last day of the month on one day, or at least like the last weekend of the month. This, I, I can't, I can't do that. That's neither here nor there. I'm reading Jade Legacy. It's happening. Thank my patrons. Then the Red Rising read-along continues with Dark Age. This is probably my favorite book. Well, the most fun remains Golden Sun, but I think the best written book in the Red Rising saga so far is Dark Age. I'm really excited to reread this. Excited feels like the wrong word because it is dark. The live show for this will be on my channel. There will be another giveaway and we will also be announcing the giveaway winner for the iron gold giveaway. It'll be a good time. We can all, it'll be support group for the trauma of this book. This will be my third time reading it. I feel like it's kind of masochistic to keep reading this book because it's so dark, but yep. Then we'll be ready for Lightbringer in July. So I'm pumped. And again, I bought a paperback literally just because this book is massive and the hardcover is annoying to read. <laughs> then I joined um, a book club in my local area recently. I joined in the end of April and in June we will be reading my first Kurt Vonnegut, Cat's Cradle. I actually, before I bought this for for this, I didn't own this before. The only Vonnegut I owned and have not read is Slaughterhouse-Five. So I thought that would be my first Vonnegut whenever I got around to it, but uh, instead we will be reading Cat's Cradle. I said, I feel like this might be a library copy. I really like the SFF Master or SF Masterworks um, editions. And I saw that it had it in hardcover and then it arrived and it's one of those hardcovers that's like printed on the thing. And I know European books do that sometimes and it's not like a library copy, but anyway, um. That's fine. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm excited to finally read Vonnegut and discuss it with the book club that I'm now a part of, which is a cool new thing. <laughs> then the year of Gaiman continues with Anansi Boys by Neil Gaiman. This will be my second time reading it. Um, I haven't, the first and only time I read this was quite some time ago. So I remember the big things in it, but I, the most of the specifics um, have left my mind. So I'm really excited to read this. I mean, I would be anyway, but um, cause it'll be almost like new. I mean, I know how it ends, but yeah, it'll, it'll be almost like new. Also, look at how young Neil Gaiman is on the back of this book. Holy shit. <laughs> little baby. Little baby Neil. I mean, he's still rocking the same like aesthetic. <laughs> same clothes, same haircut. Hasn't changed. Yeah, I am. Oh, I think there's a spider on the cover of this. There surely is a spider. Anansi Boys video will be, I don't, I haven't decided what kind of video I'm going to do for Anansi Boys. So I guess we'll find out together. <laughs> and the Witcher read along continues with Baptism of Fire by Andrzej Sapkowski. I've been thoroughly enjoying rereading the Witcher books and these gorgeous hardcovers are also a joy. And yeah, we will be chatting about it on Chapter 3 Podcast on the last Tuesday of June, which I have no idea what the date of that is. I, oh, I, I could check. Prop my phone over to Google Ted Chang for no freaking reason. The 27th, unless something gets in the way, we will be chatting about this on Chapter 3 Podcast on, did I say the 27th? The last Tuesday of June. Yeah, so join us. Then Amara and I are continuing to buddy read the first Law trilogy with Before They Are Hanged. I think Amara just told me this morning that she finished The Blade itself and is going to dive right into Before They Are Hanged. Well, also, we are like at the end of May. So yeah, I mean, this is basically still, I mean, unless she plans to read it like in one day, which like I've been known to do, but I don't think she plans to do that. Anyway, this is like end of May, beginning of June. She said she might even read Last Argument of Kings in June. I mean, I'm, <laughs> despite the enormity of my TBR, I am quite happy to stick in another Abercrombie book <laughs> immediately, abandon everything and just read Abercrombie. I'm perfectly okay with doing that. So anyway, excited to reread this and excited to see Mara's first thoughts and well, general thoughts first time reading before they are hanged. And I really hope she does immediately read Last Talking About Kings because I'm dying to know what she thinks of like, you know, the answers and stuff that you get in Last Argument. But anyway, yes, so before they are hanged. And as ever, my book of the month club books that I'm not terribly excited. Well, that's not true. One of them I'm pretty excited about. So my book of the month, I chose The Last Word, which is a thriller about like, I believe it's about an author coming for somebody who wrote like a one-star review. 
for their book, which everyone was like, you have to pick that, Lena. It's about you. <laughs> I was like, oh God, it's too scary for me. It's gonna feel too real. Yeah, after posting a negative book review, a woman living in a remote location begins to wonder if the author is a little touchy or very, very dangerous in this pulse pounding novel of psychological suspense and terror from the critically acclaimed author of No Exit and Hairpin Bridge. So yeah, this might be a little too real, but I'm kind of excited. But the one that I'm genuinely excited about is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. I really, really like Lincoln Highway more than I thought I would. I didn't like Rules of Civility, but everyone kind of told me that it wasn't that good. Everyone who said Rules of Civility wasn't that good was like, A Gentleman in Moscow is good. So I was like, all right, well. I'll get that next. And so I did. And uh, I am pretty excited about it because if it's anything like Lincoln Highway, I'm in for a treat. And last but not least, the buddy read with my patrons is, uh, well, we are continuing our read along, our little mini read along of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. So we are on Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. That is unless they all decide to abandon this buddy read, which they have been known to do. So we shall see. We haven't had our chat yet about Daughter of Smoke and Bone. If everybody in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone chat is like, we hate this, Leanna, we want no more of this. I will weep, but I will allow them freedom. <laughs> I've read this before. I quite like it. So I, I hope they do too. But if not, it's okay that they're wrong. Those are all the books that I'm gonna attempt, endeavor to get through in June. I feel like if there's anything that can hit the chopping block, it's my book of the month fun books because it's really only me that's keeping me accountable on those because I don't want to fall behind on them. And I want to beat my book of the month club reading challenge. But yeah, the rest are all obligations <laughs> in one form or another. I guess Gaiman could also hit the chopping block, but also Anansi Boys is pretty short, so shouldn't really be a problem. I guess I will be very, very busy, very, very busy in June um, reading all these books. But let me know in the comments down below if you're reading these books as well, if you have read them, if you want to read them, if you never want to read them, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, while so I can subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Thank you.